report on this. What about two? All right, oh. don't forget um, interrelationships. So we're on, gonna start on page 114 because I forgot to take notes. Mm -hmm. I'm here to start. Um, so interrelationships, page 114. This is stuff that you guys already know, um, but we just never took notes on it for some reason, right? Yeah. Okay. So predator-prey relationship, right, go ahead and write a definition. Um, a predator is a type of carnivore, so it's eating meat that kills its food. The organism the predator feeds upon is called its prey. Example is a wolf and a rabbit. Lion and zebra, a bear and fish, a fox and a rabbit. My dog killed a baby rabbit the other day. I was so mad at him. Really? Yeah, it was like teeny tiny. It was like a newborn, and it was just hopping around, and then he started playing with it like a chew toy, and it was dead. Aww. <laughs> I was like, you bad dog. <laughs> just a trying cheetah. to live his funny life. A cheetah and a gazelle. You know why prey are more um, holier animals than predators? Why what? You know why um, the the prey is a more holier um, animal? Why? <laughs> because it's got holiness in its name. Prey. That's a really bad joke. So <laughs> <laughs> on, it's so bad, it's funny. <laughs> I'm so bad at like jokes like that. I'm gonna like. Quick thinking, but that was terrible. I'm not gonna lie, that was bad. That was really bad. Um, a niche. So this is a specific role that an organism plays in its environment, habitat, diet, etc. So looking at this example that they have um, on the PowerPoint, um, there's a bird, there's a tree there, right? And these there's three different types of species: the yellow rumped warbler, which lives in the bottom half. The bay breasted warbler, which feeds in the middle half, and the Cape May warbler, which feeds at the tips of the branches near the top of the tree. Even though those three species have the same habitat, they're different niches, which means that they will not compete against each other. So niches are good because they reduce mm -hmm. competition. that an organism plays oh, why, are you, why are you speaking like that? Oh, welcome Cole plays in an environment you don't have to um, that. coyotes uh, you could say have niche as well uh, as well because they have a lot of different types of uh, diet they can eat snakes birds services fruits, nuts, grass, and they can basically eat almost anything they can find, <clears throat> including like hurting farmers by hunting sheep and domestic fowl. Um, they dig out prey or they ambush. So they're able to have a wide variety of niches. I got bit by a snake the other day. Really? Ooh. Yeah, it was a gardener snake. They didn't hurt because they don't have any teeth. 
You got chased by one. Just stand around and look at it in his eyes. He'll walk away. No, I killed him. <laughs> oh, chill. And also, <laughs> examples of what organism am I thinking about? Not salamanders. Oh, I can't think. There's some organisms that live, they're like similar species. Some live near the water to get access in and out of the water. Some leave, some live they're away from the water. And even though they have the same habitat, it's different niches and it reduces competition. Symbiotic relationships. Right now, we're still writing. Okay. Right. How about crayfish? Crayfish. 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 I cried in the membrane. Crayfish are funny. I used to have crayfish. Like, I had, like, three or four of them. And I named one Rocky and then one um, yeah. Road. No, Rocky and Road. And then the other two died, like, the day I got them. I did not. That is gross. <laughs> so, um, I had hey, my pet fish. Um, so I ended up na renaming Road to Petey, and so Rocky ended up eating Petey in, like, half, and so I had to chuck Petey, and then Rocky just got huge, and then I had to let him go because he was, like, so big I couldn't hold on to him anymore, and, like, he'd snap at me. It was like, gross. That's sick. Do you guys know what uh -huh. avocets are or oyster cutters? Or Ew, no. <laughs> Do you I don't guys like to taste oysters. Are? All right, so... Well, oyster catchers. So there's different types of birds, such as plovers, oyster catchers, avocets, crane, and flamingos. They all have. They're all example of a niche um, because they have different. Well, the flamingos can go um, in the depth of waters further and get different type of food sources than ducks do, which can go a little bit downward. And the next of oyster catchers and plovers, they can live in the same environment but they have different niches and that reduces competition. All right, moving on to the next one. Symbiotic relationship, and I want you to write this down. It's a relationship from where two species live closely together in a long-term interaction where at least one benefits. So it's like a marriage. Oh. No. Sure. No, it's like venom from Marvel. Actually, Marriage might work in this. Make sure you write down that definition. Good job, Dolly. You came back with that horrible joke. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I miss the most, the most about school? Wow. Uh, Is Solomon interrupting everybody. <laughs> no recollection of Solomon that. getting kicked out of the class. <laughs> Oh gosh, Solomon. You miss your reason. I, 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 really I, really so I really do miss you guys as students. It's not the same without you. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So and this is all right? uplifted during the summer. I'm gonna go to Thunder Island and I'm gonna sh shove my head in the pool. <laughs> Good idea. So done with the school. I start swimming Monday. Congratulations. You get to swim it in a crick. Lucky. In a crick. It's probably hey, I'd take anything. <laughs> Yo, it's going right. to be cold. I have to wear a wetsuit. Can I move on only because it's 948 and we got a bunch to do? Yeah. All right. Uh, mutualism. It's when both species benefit from the relationship. So, example I have are like, well, I don't have here, like the flower. The bees fly from the flower to flower gathering nectar, which they make into food, which also benefits the bee. When they land in flower, the bees get some pollen on their hairy bodies, and when they land in the next flower, some of the pollen from the first one rubs off, so it pollinates the plant. It's a mutualistic relationship. The bees get to eat, and the flowering plants get to reproduce. Example here, the example on the left, I don't even know if that's an alligator or a crocodile, but that bird cleaning the teeth, about to get eaten. Gets teeth um, the alligator gets bugs and Parasites off of it. I mean, birds eats them at the end. Does that make sense? While the bird gets food from it. Uh. On the right side, we have the rhino and the birds. The birds get a passageway, and they get to eat all of those um, parasites, bugs off of the rhino, and the rhino gets less annoying ticks on it. You know, oh uh, come on! I was about to say, do you know that some birds can eat ticks? It's pretty weird. Yeah, chickens too. 
All right, you don't necessarily have to write down this example as long as you can think of an example yourself. Or ants and plants, plants provide the ants with nectar as food, and the ants and plants keep away from other insects. From <laughs> All right, moving on to commensalism. This is when one species benefits, but the other is neither helped nor harmed. So think about birds living on the tree. The bird that lives on the tree, um, we'll write this down and then I'll explain it. Write down, yeah, write down. Like I said, it could be like some marriages. Where one species benefits, but the other one just follows around like a limp dog. In this case, what's this a picture of? That's a fish and coral. Fish. Uh, oh, it's a clownfish in an anemone. Anemone. Yes. An anemone. A clownfish, when it's trying to hide away from predators, <laughs> it can go into the anemone to hide and it's protected. The anemone is neither helped from this, but it's neither harmed. The birds living in a tree. Birds go to trees for food, shelter, protection, housing of eggs, and the tree is not benefited from it, but it's not harmed either. So it's like a neutral. And the third example is of parasitism. One species benefits, oh. the other is harmed. The parasite feeds on the other organism called a host but usually does not kill the organism it feeds upon as it will destroy its food. Please on a dog, athlete's foot. Um, I'm about to my mouth. Head lice. What uh, is that on the one down there? On the bird? I think it's a big uh. tick. I don't remember what these pictures are because they gross me out. And I haven't even, I don't really look at them. I should find new ones. But every time I want to find like really good ones, I look at all this other gross stuff. So that's why I, I forgot what these are, the specific names, because I don't even know what they are. So nasty. You know, like dogs that are put on the street, or like wild dogs have things on the right. You can call me weird, but I find. You guys ever watch Dr. Pimple Popper? I love oh, Action. I hate that show. Or I actually Good never watched it, but I like watching um, heat blisters pop. You guys ever seen that? No. Well, someone I don't gets want to. Skin damage from getting flam on their arm, so then it creates large sores filled with nastiness, and then they just stick a knife through it, and then it oozes out, and there's no set, there's no nerves there, and it's pretty nasty but cool and satisfactory all at the same time. Okay, okay. I I don't know if I want to eat anymore. Cole, I'm gonna send you a link. I got you, buddy. Oh. No. <laughs> Yo, Cole's gonna like end up throwing up. That's funny. <laughs> I'll send you it too. All right, I'll watch it. Yo, were you, ta uh, so you were talking just... about the pimple pop, pip pimple popper thing? No, the not Doctor Pimple Popper. It's one of my favorite YouTubers, and he did oh. it. Oh my god, dude. We we lost the kitten. We don't know where the kitten went. Kitten's gone. All right. Um, it's not in my room. Right, yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. So we actually are done with the unit on ecology. So what comes at the end of a unit? Oh, what? What comes at the end of a unit? Unit town. No. The unit test. If I can find it. So let me show you guys your unit exam, if I can find it. Oh, it's only multiple choice questions. Oh, sweet. I'm gonna pull it up right here. File. How many pages is it? It's two pages. Oh, sweet. Files. Actually. That looks simple. Yeah, right can here, this is it. it's 13 questions. So file, download, I'm going to download as a PDF so I can show you guys. So what I'm going to do it is I've already transferred this into a Google Docs or a Google Form. So, um, so I'm going to post this up. This is the exam. It's 13 questions, all multiple choice, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. The Google Form is going to look like 
this unit nine exam. What I suggest doing is um, looking at what I suggest doing is going through all your notes first. You guys have notes in your notebook and the notes are from page 111 to um, 111 to 126. Go through your notes first. Once you've like looked at your notes and examples and stuff like that, maybe look up some short small YouTube videos on it. Then I want you to pull up the PDF file and on a loosely paper, look through the problems, figuring out what topic it's talked about, the answer choice for one through six and seven through 13. Once and write it on a loosely paper. Once you think you're all set with it, then go to the Google form, type in your email and then answer it. It's all the same thing. Okay. How many questions? Yep, what's your question? I said how many? 13. Okay, that's not bad at 13. all. 13, I'm making it easy, only because there's just so much content with this unit that I decided to make it, usually I make this probably the longest exam of the year, it's like eight pages, because I do, <laughs> oh, huh? I do a lot of <laughs> no. short, I do a lot of short response in a lot of labs for this unit, which I obviously can't do now. Yes, I forgot. We don't have to do labs anymore because I was failing a couple of labs. You don't fail them. You just don't hand them in. <laughs> True. So I decided to... Um, check your phone. Check my phone? No, I said Cole, check his phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I decided to um, just cut this a lot because I did that species assignment report and stuff like that. We had discussions mostly. So I cut mm -hmm. But this exam i'm going to have you guys hand it in monday so i can grade it tuesday and hand out the grades wednesday and wednesday we'll start a new unit because after today we only have five classes left wow anybody have any questions nope nope and i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend <sighs> you too all right chill out solomon all right have a wonderful weekend i will see you next wednesday oh no right, bye. I bye actually just in math Okay, see you next month. Solomon, what do I have to do? It's I sent it to